Hello, it is Friday, right? I love Fridays because it means I get to have lots of family time with my family every day to me as far as work. I love my business, so Friday to me isn't one of those days where I'm like, yay, it's the weekend. I'm really more like that because it means I get to see my family more. Um, but actually, summer has started for us. So hi guys, welcome. Hi Amy, hi Andrea. Hey Melissa, so glad you guys are joining us. This is going to be awesome today. So if you're just joining me, oh, I can hear the rain starting to come in. We are gonna be having rain all weekend. Boo, tell me what it's gonna be like where you live. Um, I have to live vicariously through you, but I think all of us on the East Coast are getting hit pretty hard, Southeast, I should say, um, by this tropical whatever going on on the Gulf side. So bummer for us. Hi, Sheila. So good to see you hopping on, miss you. Um, so we are excited about this today. Rain, I know, Amy. Uh, we're excited um, uh, to do this today. I was um, with Elise last weekend. We were running around with all of the awesome North Carolina peeps and some other people who drove in. And um, I realized there was something that Elise was doing and that I was doing that doesn't always come natural for people. And it definitely doesn't come natural for me. Um, but some of it does. And then there were other parts that Elise did that are more natural for her. And so I thought it'd be awesome if we shared those with you guys today. I know Elisa, give her a minute and she'll be hopping on. So I am looking down here and just realized it is almost 11 a.m. on Friday Eastern time. And I have still have got, forgotten to put on my DFT. So any of you guys that take Thrive, let me know if you're like that too. If you sometimes just forget to add on your step three. I got so busy this morning and went out to work out and was wondering why I was feeling a little tired and run down. That's why I thought it was from the rain, but it wasn't. So I'm gonna use this one, it's so cute, look. So cute, it'll look cute in my outfit today. I'm wearing a jean shirt and white jeans, so it'll be perfect. A little rainy day outfit. All right, so today we are gonna be talking about how to talk to people and to get new customers from that or people that are interested in your product or your business or your service. I'm making this very general, but obviously those of you that are watching know that um, you know that I am selling Th the Thrive Experience. That's the product that I'm personally passionate about that I share each and every day. But I know there's a lot of people that are on my Facebook feed and on Elisa's that maybe sell a different product or a different service or maybe you haven't tried the Thrive Experience yet, which I would say, hello, summer's coming and you do not wanna miss out on feeling your best. So I'll give that plug for you really quick because a lot of you may not know this, but I started my Thrive Experience in July of 2014. So this July, it's gonna be exactly four years. Oh my gosh, Christine, I have to tell you that my CPA, Bill and Melody, go to your, um, spin studio out in parkland how cool is that it was so funny they were talking about it the other day and i was like that's my girlfriend christine she's amazing so shout out to that if you live in parkland you got to check out her spin studio it's amazing okay getting back onto subject this will actually work for you too christine um so last weekend i was with elise and we were in north carolina and we were traveling and doing some stuff in Asheville, north carolina for our team and in charlotte um, and one of the things that I noticed was how Elise would relate to people and connect with them and get their information very easily. And yet I have a very large team and quite often I will hear people say, I've gone through my friends and family list and I have nobody else to talk to. And I'll say, well, are you adding new people to your list every single day? And they'll say, no, how do you do that? Or I don't feel comfortable doing that. Or that doesn't come naturally. Or people won't give me their phone number or their email. And so I think that there are some key things that you can do to truly help yourself with this. And then when Elise comes on, I think that we'll role play this out a little bit. Um, so if you guys see Elise come on and I don't because I try not to look at, um, at the distractions of the names because I get distracted easily like a squirrel. And so if you guys see Elise come on, will you let her know to comment to me so that I can add her in? I know she's running a few minutes late. So one of the things that I think is the biggest um, tip that I'll give you, if you've never read the book, How to Influence in how to Win Friends and Influence People um, by Dale Carnegie, huge. Guys, we all have got to read that book at some point in your life. I truly believe that it's the best college graduate gift that you could ever give somebody. Um, maybe even high school, but I don't know if honestly people who are, oh, I see Elise. I don't know if people read it, but when you're leaving college, you are hungry to be successful, right? Most people are. They've spent all this money. They want to be successful. And that book by Dale Carnegie is actually behind the Bible, one of the biggest 
um, selling books and it's always in the top five. And the reason is because it teaches you how to relate to people, how to connect to people, how to get on a personal level with people in a way that really allows them to feel connected to you. Hello. Um, so I was just sharing with them, Elise, about the Dale Carnegie Hi. book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and why it's so awesome for everyone to read, and how that will help people as they start to connect and relate with people. So um, Elise, I was telling them that we're going to talk to them a little bit today about how when you and I are out and about, we connect with people and relate with them, because quite often I'll hear people say, I can't get people's emails or their phone numbers, or how do you talk to people, or I'm scared to do that. And so we're going to kind of give you guys, I'm going to give you a couple tips and ideas. I'm going to let Elise give you a couple tips and ideas. And then Elise, I think it'd be really fun if we role played it. What do you think? Can you hear me, Elise? I'm like talking it up and you're not responding, which it makes keeps me think freezing. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep going. Let me know when you can hear me. So um, do you want to go somewhere else? Is it freezing for anybody else? Can you guys let me know if it's freezing for you? Yeah, I can work through it if it's not for them. Can you guys let me know if Blair's freezing? That's me. Am I freezing for you? Because <laughs> my stuff looks good. All right. So I'm going to keep going. You guys let us know. Andrea Kaufman, will you let us know if we're freezing at all? Okay. Everyone's saying I'm good, Elise. So maybe it's yours. Yeah. Maybe it's just what I'm seeing you is freezing. How about you guys? Am I freezing for you all? No, you're not freezing. No? We're okay, good. Perfect. Well, then roll with it. I can, okay. I can film. Okay. Go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So some of the tips that I'll give you, obviously, is that book. It's a great way for you to really relate with people and connect with them. The next thing that I will say is a, a smile and a compliment can go for miles, guys. So if you're feeling like, I don't know how to meet new people. I don't know how to add them to my list. I don't know how to grow my business with strangers. You know, those are things that you're telling yourself. And remember, we talk about this all the time. You're affirming that in your brain. And then your brain wants to be right, always wants to be right. So it will make it happen. So instead, change the way you're talking to yourself and say, I am so excited that today I'm going to meet two new people to add to my list. I am happy and grateful that I make friends everywhere I go. And then start to work on small little things like eye contact. How often are we, and I mean, Elise can tell you, I did this a lot last weekend too because I was busy trying to hit a really big goal. But I was like this in my phone a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're in your phone, you can't relate to people and you can't see them. They can't connect with you. So it could be down from the person who is bringing up your cart valet. It could be the person that's checking you in at the hotel. It can be the checkout agent at your grocery store. It can be the person at, you know, um, the local coffee shop, whatever, but look them in the eye. That is the best thing that you can do for somebody today is look them in the eye and then give them a compliment, guys. Like not a fake compliment, a real compliment. There is always something you can compliment every single person on and that breaks down the walls and the barriers of the stranger danger, right? Because we've all been taught since we were kids that strangers are dangerous and not to talk to people and um, how many of you even know your neighbors anymore? Like, it's really sad that our society has changed. So in order to break down those walls, you have to start with some actionable steps of eye contact and giving people a compliment and just finding something that you can break down the walls with them right away, right? And then a lot of times what ends up happening is you start talking, they ask the normal question, what do you do? Or what are you here for? Or what is that on your arm, right? When you're wearing um, something. And that's when you can start telling them exactly what it is. So make sure that's my second tip to you. First one is making eye contact and giving a compliment to break down the barriers. My second tip I can give you is to have your elevator pitch ready to go. So whether you own a Cypher Studio, like my friend Christine, or you are selling the Thrive Experience, like a lot of you guys that I can see hopping on, or you are sharing jewelry or something else, no matter what product or service that you are providing to people, you need to have your 60 second elevator pitch practice and ready, right? So if you don't have that, that's the other thing that I would really hope that you guys would work on and make sure you've mastered and be comfortable with. And maybe even do it with somebody in your home, children, your husband, a friend, just so you get comfortable and you make sure that you're able to say really quick in a minute or less, what is it that you do or what is it that you're passionate about that would help that person that you're talking to. So Elise, do you have any more tips on that? And then I thought after you give some tips, maybe we could role play that out. Sure, <clears throat> thank you. So essentially <laughs> make the decision 
that you're going to connect with people on a regular basis, make it become a practice. Because the thing I know for myself was when I was in college, I failed my public speaking class. I was very, very shy. I had all kinds of reasons to believe and think that people didn't want to connect with me or like me. I mean, who tells themselves that in their own heads? Terrible. So here's what I've learned is that what we believe is what we can create. So if you start to tell yourself that you have something incredible to share with others and at the heart of it, that is connection, right? Just being in the same space together. So enjoying that another human being who has an incredible story that could probably inspire the socks off of you if you got to know them at all. Um, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So uh, it takes slowing down a little bit to make connection with people and being present in the moment. And when we feel incredibly shy, then we create a story about why people don't want to connect with us or how it's too scary to put ourselves out there, right? And so I like to <clears throat> take a step back before I go out. And honestly, it's very spiritual for me, as you guys all know about me. I will always pray to God to place before me, place in my path the people I'm meant to bless, and please give me the perfect words to connect. And so... Yeah. I really feel like if you allow him to speak through you, you will connect with the right people at the right time. And the timing is perfect in that sense. And so many, many people will come to me in the business or that I've met and they have, they will say, I was praying about something like this just last night. And I truly believe that that is a key to succeeding in connecting with people when you're out and about, because then you're of service. You're not in this place of um, it's all about me and I need to make a sale or sign somebody up or the whole nine yards, right? Instead, it's about mm -hmm. how can I serve other people? How can I connect to them on a heart-to-heart -heart level? And so when, you're, when you smile at someone and you pay them a compliment, you guys, that's a connection right there. And that builds that bridge of rapport, which then leads to the message that you share in your offer. And I love to use the acronym FORM. You can type this in the comments form. It stands for family, occupation, recreation, and message. This is very old school, you all. And um, I know that you can connect online, but it's powerful what you can do when What was the M? M is your message. Thank you. So it's very powerful what you can do in real life with people. So don't discount that. I know it's easier to hide behind your computer and just share things online, but you're missing a lot of opportunity when you're out and about, even going to networking events. I did that for years and years because I love to meet people. I love to hear their stories. I love to hear about what they've overcome. And that those relationships are built through conversation and asking questions. Remember, two ears, one mouth. So listen mm -hmm. twice as much as you speak. Um, you have a solution for them and your products and your business, your services, your opportunity. You have a solution. It's just a matter of building just enough trust that they are open to learning more about what you have to offer. So Blair, how do we do that? Yeah, and I want to point out one thing that Elise um, said that I think is so important, which is, you know, asking them questions and building relationships. Guys, if you're shy or you're nervous, and I still get nervous when I talk to people, and I do, you know, I do pray before I talk to people or before I go to networking events, but one of the things that I've learned, and I learned it from the Dale Carnegie book, is people love to talk about themselves, so ask questions. And know what those questions are ahead of time. Like, for example, when I know I'm going to have to go with my husband to a business dinner with him, with maybe one of his really nice clients and their wife, I will think of six questions ahead of time that I know I'm going to ask her that night so that I can get to know the wife and the husband better. Why? Because then I don't get nervous in that moment. I'm already coming prepared with questions that I'm going to ask. And once you start asking questions, they start sharing about themselves and it naturally flows. We all have connections and things that we can relate with each other about. Um, but that usually comes from breaking down those walls and asking those questions. So it is really exciting once you start to do that, you start to get more comfortable with that. 
Um, so I thought what would be fun, Elise, is if we kind of reenacted, right? Because a lot of times Elise and I would be um, getting a valet over the weekend or getting um, somebody would be helping us with our baggage or we'd be in the Uber car with an Uber driver and they would ask us what we did, right? It just naturally would come up because it's usually one of the questions that other people will ask you pretty much right away um, after they ask where you're from usually. And so that made it um, very easy for us to talk about it. So Elise, would you mind if we just role play that out? Yeah. Okay. So I'll be the Uber driver. I'll be an Uber driver. That just sounds like fun. So, okay. So, oh, hey, so you said you're from Montana. What do you do in Montana? Can you hear me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell because you're sitting there. All right. So Elise. At least just role play out what an Uber, if an Uber driver asked you what you do, how would you respond? Oh, I'll say I change people's lives with three simple steps every single morning. Have you heard of Thrive? And they'll be like, what? No, no, what is it? And I'll say, oh my goodness, I got to share more information with you. But you know what? I got a call coming in. I'll, I'll do something that makes it very, like, I got to be quick and fast. Because otherwise, what I've learned is if you, like, you will barf information all over the person, right? You want a certain level of, of curiosity and interest. And so keep the ball in your court by Matt. So what I do is I'll say, oh, I've got a call coming in. So um, do you have your card? I'm going to text you the information. Or if, 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 like, driving is different because obviously I can't exchange um, numbers on our phones easily. So I will ask them if they have their card mm -hmm. or um, if we can connect that way. And that's how I do it. I take it as quickly as I possibly can into text and get their information for their, with their phone number. Um, oftentimes I'll have them ask me, do you have a card? And I'll say, you know what? I just handed out my last card and it's true. I don't have any cards. So I say, I just handed out my last card, but um, you know what? Let me pull up the notes app on my phone here real quick. And I'll take down their phone number and their email address, and I'll say to them, I'm going to send you a link to a very quick video. If I sent that to you, would you watch it and give me your feedback? So again, there's the conversation. I'm, I'm giving them some kind of an assignment. And then... Oh, you're frozen. Killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. All right, a lot of you guys are going to die laughing because you know what movie that's from. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Elise, maybe hop off and try to hop back. All right, hopefully she'll hop back on in a message. Hop back on if you can. All right, um, so one of the biggest things that she talked about there. Oh, good, she's trying to hop back on. Let's see if we can make this work, guys. So one of the biggest things um, that she was talking about there is she says to them, you know, if I send you this video, are you willing to watch it? So she's getting their connection. She's getting them to agree to it. I always love asking people a question, ending any conversation with an open-ended question because it gives a buy-in, right? Now, they're mm -hmm. buying. It's not like we're begging them to go watch this video. They're excited right. when they get off shift to go watch this video. So back to you. Did you have anything else you want to say that? with you would you watch this and give me your quick feedback and I find it to be very effective my interaction with my and teaching them up to think like an on the action do you see very very helpful and very I feel like we're having trouble again connecting <laughs> are you guys there are you there uh, i'm gonna take her off because it's not working maybe she can get better connection um so the if i could would you you guys write that down if you've never that means yes if i could would you if i could send you over this link for the video would you be willing to watch it today and get back to me okay that gives them buy 
could show you how you could reduce um, stress and discomfort in your body, would you be willing to watch this video about it? You know, getting to know them if they had just told you they had discomfort in their body. So it's really connected. At that point, she then sends them the video and tells them how to, to make their own customer account. And so um, that's one of the things that I personally have a good idea as well, is getting them to set up their own customer account and telling them how to do that um, so that they're taking control over it. Yeah, the weather is horrible and AT&T is horrible right now. So um, we might have to just call this quits for today and try to redo it another time. So, all right, guys, I hope that this was helpful. We will try to rebook this for a different time. Um, maybe we'll do it on Zoom so we know it'll go well.